97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan, powered by InsideTheBirds.com. I think we have the ability to do something really special uh, with this group, but it's going to take a lot of hard work. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. All right, time now for Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. NFL insider Adam Kaplan is with us today. Football at Four is brought to you by PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up now, and they'll match your first deposit up to $250. lot to get into on today's edition of Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, as Adam Kaplan joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Adam, I feel like it's been a while since I've spoken to you. It is, but now, you know, my friend, how how was your vacation? Did you get anything done? What were you doing while you were away? Uh, I did a little this and that. I got some things done. I did actually get some. I, I hung out on the beach for a couple of days, you know, all that kind of good stuff. But, uh, you know, it was hard because there's so many. There's so much going on. There's Sixers, Flyers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, look, I, as I was telling uh, Josh Henning, I was like, look, man, enjoy the Sixers while you have it. It's not going to last very long. Now, the Flyers are hanging in there. Uh, they were, they're entertaining us. The Phillies are frustrating us, and so are the Sixers. So, guess what? This is South Jersey Philly sports for you. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. Uh, yesterday, 0 for 3 for all the teams, but the Eagles oh, are back. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. funny. Uh, let me ask you this. As a guy who's been around football, covered football, sure. August is usually football. Like We are, like, thirsting, ready for the regulars. Do you feel that football is kind of, like, lost in the sauce a little bit because of everything? No, not, not really. Look, yeah, you're right. We would have preseason games in which – this is just odd that we're not having them, but we, we don't have them. Um, no, I mean, look, there's there's still players out there. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe is still out there. I mean, he's he's part of the Jaguars, but he hasn't signed his franchise tag. He, he, he wants to be out. Uh, you've got Judevian Clowney. He's still out there. But if we would have had preseason games, that certainly would have added some excitement. Uh, but, yeah, it, you're right. It's different, but it's not completely devoid of, of – Intrigue, and you know, remember, Mike, we're less than four weeks from the start of the regular season. It's amazing to me. It is, and we got a lot. Doug Peterson spoke today. Uh, let's start with this Miles Sanders injury update. Doug said he's comfortable. I mean, Boston Scott hurt too, Sanders week to week, but Doug kind of indicated today that he does not have any thoughts about bringing someone in. Do you, uh, does your intel concur with what he says? Yeah, well, let's start with the injury, Mike. Miles Sanders, I'm told, is going to be fine. Um, it's a leg injury. Uh, they're not saying what it is, but uh, I'm told by a couple of people, nothing to worry about. It'll be ready for week one. Uh, I, I just get the sense here they're doing what they did last year when Sanders had dual hamstring injuries. Remember, they shut him down for the offseason. They w- would not let him practice after the rookie minicamp. He never actually had OTA practices for two months, and that was a smart move. They were being proactive with it, not letting him have a setback. And as you know, he wound up being ready for training camp, and he clearly bit out Jordan Howard for the starting job. So from what I understand, and I'm told, uh, nothing to worry about here. But it was odd, though, the, the wording that they used in their little injury report week to week. I don't see it that way. I think it's more day-to-day. What is with the injury reports? What the, it's like a hockey injury report. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising. Now, okay, this started with Doug Peterson last summer. He was asked about injuries, and he's like, lower body, upper body, lower body. And you just mentioned hockey. I don't know that he got it from there, but he started that. Now, in his first year with the Eagles in 2016, he really gave out too much information. He, he just didn't know what the protocol was. He would just give out, what, if you asked a question, even if it would reveal too much, he, he would give it out. And that kind of would stop over time, particularly after they won the Super Bowl in 17. Uh, he, he gave out less and less information. Still one of the better, though, around the National Football League about giving information. But it's been less and less and less over time. What's going on with the quarterback room? Carson, Way- Carson Wentz, Nate Sudfeld, Jalen Hurts, any update on those three out on the field? Yeah, Hunter, Wentz has had a spectacular camp. Uh, he's up to 250 pounds. This is the most he's, he's been. He's good. Now, the story clearly has been Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is a guy that had some just some issues with mechanics. Uh, the, the senior ball, it wasn't great there. That's why it was so surprising that uh, he went in the second round. But he's off to a great start. Now, I will tell you, the way that they're using him is not as a traditional drop-back quarterback like, like Carson. They're moving him around in the pocket, letting him throw on the run. You know, he's a mobile quarterback, and that's the way you should manage him. 
it's been quite comfortable. But just let's not forget here. Mike Mike brought up how football's been different. He's not getting a preseason where he's missing all those reps. He missed two months of off season reps in their off season program because no one's allowed to practice. So I think people are getting a little ahead of themselves. I know people, the, the fans are going crazy with the reports that are out there from the reporters who are going to be there. By the way, I'll be there next week. Uh, Nate Sarveld is the real story here. Uh, in, our, in our latest Inside the Birds, I really detailed his struggles. He's, he's, the issues, guys, same as last summer. He's not pulling the trigger on throws like he used to be. He was such an aggressive thrower in 17 and 18. He developed this habit last year of being indecisive and not throwing it. I don't know why it's happening. But it's definitely happening, uh, from what I'm told. Uh, so Sudfeld and Doug was point, pointedly asked this today: Is he definitively their number two quarterback? Is there a competition at that spot uh, with Jalen Hurts? He's definitely Sudfeld's definitely the number two, and it's kind of what I was just alluding to. You, you have to be careful with Jalen Hurts. Uh, they have a developmental program for him. It was not for him to be the number two quarterback. To me, it's more about would you would you re-sign a guy like Josh McCown? Like they that he wasn't asked that, uh, and he did say Subfelt is number two. But they've got this week and next week net, training camp ends for the Eagles next Friday. Then the week after that, they start game planning for Week One, and then the following week after that is Week One. Uh, so when you look at Subfelt, he needs to get himself going here. I'm uh, someone I'm going to be monitoring. He's definitely the number two, but if he continues to struggle a little bit. Um, we may have something else going on here, so we'll see. Yeah, and that's interesting. You know, Doug was also asked about Jalen Hurts, about what's impressed so far, and then he said, oh, you want me to reveal the game plan with them? And, uh, you know, the follow-up was kind of like, yeah, that would be great. Uh, so is there a game plan that you're sensing from Hurts outside of the backup quarterback uh, competition? Yeah, there's no question about it. What, what Jeff Mosher and I had said in our just in our shows on Inside the Birds since uh, the draft, he won't just be a quarterback. He's, he, you might see him in, inside the five-yard line as a Wildcat quarterback. You, there are certain things that you can do with him. You could use him in red zone situations. To me, it was never about him just being a quarterback for this season. Now, now by the way, the key for him to dress each week is his understanding of the offense understand, and his understanding of what they're asking him to do. And you know, They're down to three quarterbacks. They didn't need four because Kyle Aletta was not needed because they don't have any preseason but, again, to sum it up for Hurts, you can't give him the whole package this early because he just has not had enough reps. I know people are excited, and it's cool, but he's got a long ways to go. Uh, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds podcast. Make sure you guys uh, all are checking that out for Daily Intel uh, on the Eagles, uh, the latest podcast uh, from Inside the Birds and InsideTheBirds.com. Let's go to Jalen Rieger. What opened up my eyes yesterday? He said he got a little Julio Jones in his game. I guess Rieger said that, but... Uh, uh, I don't think the size matches Julio Jones, but maybe yeah. the skill set. Uh, but what is Rieger's role in this offense? Is it bigger than maybe we thought now that we're seeing him at camp? And has he exceeded maybe where they thought he would be? Yeah, Jalen Rieger is a guy that it's really interesting. So, uh, a, uh, an Eagle source said to me that they've never had anyone quite like him. Typically, when Mike, when you look at speed receivers, they're either tall and 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 not so fast or they're smaller and fast, but not put together physically. He happens to be, okay, he's under 5'11", but he's fast and he's really, really strong. He's built like a bodybuilder in a way. I mean, he's just super developed, but he's super fluid and explosive. Uh, you're talking about one of the best punt returners in college football over the last couple of years, so he's, he's, he's probably going to be their punt returner. It's not been decided yet, as, as I'm told, but he probably will be. Uh, you're going to see him line up in the slot. You're going to see him line up out wide. Uh, you're going to see him uh, be on the move. And I, he, he's going to get a ton of snaps in week one, even even if um, Alshon Jeffrey's back in the first month, which I know is possible from what I'm told. Rager's still going to play a heck of a lot. And he's going to be a fun guy, Mike, because the way you ask the question is really interesting. They're not going to use him as a traditional, just line him up in one spot. They're going to line him up in a variety of spots. And don't be surprised to see uh, Rager and Jalen Hurts on the field at some point this season. Hmm, that would be interesting. How about Deshaun Jackson? How is he looking out there? Great. The, the, he looks incredible. In fact, uh, Hunter, they, they don't need to practice him very much. He's just, I mean, he's, you know about the, the, the injury history, particularly with soft tissue. 
they don't need to overwork him. He still looks good. Uh, he's developed his lower body very well, and he's going to be a major factor. You know, last year, the first game of the season, the only game he really played, two 50-yard-plus touchdowns against the same opponent they're playing week one this year, the Washington football team, and this one will be in Washington, but he looks incredible. Uh, he's just it's. You're talking about guys, one of the best deep threats in NFL history, who's absolutely positively lost nothing when it comes to speed. Uh, that'll be uh, interesting to see if he can stay healthy, obviously, will be the big thing for Deshaun Jackson and having both those guys possibly. What about J.J. Ortega-Whiteside? Uh, what are we hearing about him? He's been a little hurt. Uh, what have we seen out of him? Because it looked like the receivers to start this week at camp did not include him in the uh, first group. Yeah, he came back. Uh, he missed some time. I believe he came back. Uh, I don't know how much he's practicing, but the key for him is, you know, Mosher had said on our show uh, last week, and it was surprising that they were lining him up in the slot. Now, he would be a different slot, kind of like Jordan Matthews. Matthews at 6'3", Arthago White's at 6'2", even. It gives you a different look because Rager is going to be playing a lot on the outside, not not so much inside, and, and really... The only true slot they have is Greg Ward on the football team. So this this gives them a different sort of way to use him. And then we should also mention John Hightower and Quez Watkins. Hightower uh, had a very good day today. And he's explosive, but these are both developmental players. I think people, I know they're excited about both guys. You just got to let these guys develop. I, I, don't, I don't expect them. If Jeffrey does not come back in September and both are on the football team, it's still Jackson, it's Rager, it's Ward, it's Ortega Whiteside, and I don't see the other two kids playing a lot, although people seem to be excited about them. What's going on with the offensive line, specifically Sayamalu and Mayalata? I do know I, I saw something about Andre Dillard going in, then going out, then going in, going out. So what's going on with the uh, offensive line as of now? Yeah, so Dillard has a minor injury. Uh, he's been uh, limited in practice. Uh, I'm told that Jordan Mailata is lined up in his spot at left tackle. He's also got snaps at right tackle behind Lane Johnson. Isaac Samo uh, is probably had his best camp as a professional. Uh, his first two years, guys, it did not look very good for him in 16 or 17. Uh, lacked a little bit of confidence in himself, and he needed he just needed to perform consistently in practice. And 18 was his breakout season. He's the kind of guy, when you look at his career, he has a very good chance to be a 10- to 12-year starter. He's just a really good football player, but, again, didn't look like this the first two years, but he's turned out to be a, a really good third-round pick out of an historic class in 2016. Now, uh, obviously, the Andre Dillard, uh, the story has been him adding the weight. Jason yep. Peters at right guard. Uh, for the first time, we saw him line up there the other day. I mean, did he... Uh, is there anything about uh, how he felt there or what he looks like at that spot yet? Yeah, remember, he did miss some time. It, it's a work in progress, as you've explained to me. Um, he's a guy they're not going to Jack Driscoll. I know Driscoll's doing well in camp. It's, it's, it's Jason Peters. He just he doesn't have a lot of time here because, again, it's this week, it's next week, and the weekend after that is, is week one start, starting for that for the preparation. I don't know. See, the way you explain to me is don't think he's going to look great the first two or three weeks because this is something he's not done before, and he didn't have 24-plus practices in the offseason to make it look right. So and remember, he wasn't even there anyway for their offseason because he had not signed a contract. So uh, I think you've got to be patient. It's a good question. I don't think it's going to look good. In fact, their offensive line, remember, they've got two new starters in Dillard and Peters playing right guard. Do not expect it to look great early on. Now, you mentioned Driscoll, and it sounds like, uh, by the way, did you realize that Peterson thought he's smart? He said he's smart, he's smart, he's a smart player, very <laughs> athletic. Sounds like a guy that he has, uh, you know, at least has his eye on. Yeah, and Jack Driscoll, here's the, here's the thing. We don't know who the long-term replacement is for Jason Kelsey. I'm told that Driscoll took snaps at center at, at Auburn. <laughs> uh, Some I'm going to look into is if they're, if they're cross-training him at all at center, because I know Nate Herbig's there, and he was – he was a good find for the Eagles as an undrafted free agent, but they do not know who Kelsey's long-term guy is going to be, the replacement. Isaac Samalo could do it. He was actually drafted to be that guy, but he wound up being a really good left guard, so I don't see them moving him. But I'll tell you what, Driscoll's taking snaps at right tackle. He's taking snaps at guard, and he's done a good job. Uh, look, he's going to make the football team. The only question is, guys, when you look at their, their alignment, we know that Mylotta right now, as is explained to me, is her top backup tackle. Priors of the top backup guard. Other than that, these spots are open. They probably will keep nine. 
Herbig should be one. Well, Driscoll is definitely one of them. Herbig should be the other. And that's kind of be it, but where they, how they line them up is certainly in question. Adam Kaplan's with us, Football at Four, from the Inside the Birds podcast, and of course, uh, Football at Four every day here on the Sports Bench. I want to go back to the running back question real fast on Sanders. Sure. It, it, he's not going to be out for an extended period of time, is what we're saying, but if he was, would they feel comfortable with Corey Coleman, Elijah Holyfield, and Mike Warren going in, or at that point, would they, if, in other words, if Sanders was hurt more than he is, would they be all right going into the season with those guys? It's a great question. My sense is because Clement is having a good camp. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about him. He, this is right now. He's off to a. I would say this: the the 18 and 19, camp, 19 camps were not great. He had been coming off surgery both years, um, but. I, the way that he looks, they're very happy. Boston Scott has a minor injury, but he, he's fine. My sense is it's going to be they're going to keep four running backs. Obviously, Sanders and Scott, Clement, and then one of the three young kids, Holyfield, Warren, or Killens. Right now, they don't seem to be inclined to sign a veteran running back. Uh, we know the only guy that's out there of any note uh, is Devontae Freeman. And other than that, they haven't really looked at doing anything. So right now, they're not doing anything. But, man, it is amazing, by the way, that Devontae Freeman has not signed a contract. He wants too much money, and that's kind of where that is. Switching to the defensive side of the ball, do you sense that any adjustments are coming? Yeah, this is what we had, we had alluded to, uh, Mike and, and, and Hunter, on the segment a couple months ago. But I wasn't sure if it was going to happen because of the missed off season. So what you're going to see, really for the first time since Jim Schwartz has been with the Eagles, is you're going to see a bunch of moving parts here. He's not; They don't run a lot of post-snap disguise. They... They're not going to fool you on defense because they've not had the, the help at the back end, particularly a cornerback. Well, they've got it now with Darius Slay, who's been tremendous, by the way. He, he, he's been everything they thought and more so far. Uh, they think that Nicole Roby Coleman's a terrific slot corner. He, he's, he's there. He'll come in a nickel. And here, remember the name Will Parks, number 28, who came over from Denver. They're going to have a lot of three safety alignment with Parks, with McLeod and, and Mills. And I'm telling you, they're going to be doing some different things on defense, which you haven't seen before from Jim Schwartz. You just couldn't do it before because they've not had the help in the back end. And uh, that's important, and I think the defense could take a big step up this season based on what I've heard. Yeah, and I guess a lot of that is, too, all, how much of that is because of Slay and if we expect to see yep. him kind of moving around. He will because they're going to play man. They're going to play man, and they're actually going to move. They're going Because when they played man, they don't switch sides, but – they were the guy that's in trail, the, the, the best receiver. Well, that's going to happen this year for the first time since Schwartz has been here. And the Eagles, they're in the upper half of man coverage anyway for uh, cornerbacks, and they're going to do a lot of it. And, you know, it's, we know that the linebacker core is not very good. That's, that's a fact. But, man, this, this front four, particularly at D tackle, and the safeties, this, this is the be- deepest they've been in years in terms of secondary help. This has a chance to be a top 10 defense if everybody could just stay healthy for a change. So uh, we just mentioned Slay, and he's going to be moving around. Who's going to be moving around with him on the other side? That's the question, but I, I don't think it's much. I mean, the Eagles don't want to give Avanti Maddox a job. He's taken a majority, if not all, the first team reps. It's, a, it's over as far as I'm concerned. He's, he's the starter. The, the question is now, are they happy enough with Sidney Jones as being the fourth quarter? And what would happen if Maddox got hurt? Uh, to me, I think they're in trouble. I just don't think Sidney Jones is a starting quarter. Uh, he's not gotten to the point, Mike, where I think you could you could you pencil him in as a starting player ever with with the Eagles here. Uh, they he's only gotten to a certain point. The key, the good thing is though he's healthy. There's no question about that from what I'm told. But he just has not taken that step up. Way too inconsistent and. Maddox clearly is a guy they, they feel much better about. He, he, right now, he's their right corner. You talked about how scary this defense could be, especially if that deep front is healthy. Should we be concerned about Hargrave's injury? I know that the Eagles are, you know, they're not happy, but it's not as bad as it could have been, let's say. Should we be concerned about that? No, well, okay, the, the issue is not whether he'll be ready for week one at Washington. The question is this. How effective he's going to be with a pectoral strain? Uh, not always easy. Uh, it's got he's got to be able to move the right way. He's got to be able to grab the, the the opponent, and it's not always easy to do that when you have a strained pectoral muscle. 
Uh, look, it, what, you, what happens is when you do this, you're, you're stretching fibers in that muscle, and it's got to get back to normal. So they're rehabbing it, and as Mosher said, look, they got lucky because he did it in the weight room. So many of these pector- torn pectoral muscles happen when players are working out lifting weights, and thankfully for the Eagles, it, he didn't tear it. But I'll say this, they're incredibly deep at tackle, obviously with Hargrave and Cox. Mike Jackson, who's in the low 280s in terms of his, his weight, he's having a good camp. Hassan Ridgeway, who did a good job before he got hurt last season, and uh, Anthony Rush was a good find for them. So they're really good at D-tackle. Uh, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds podcast, will leave you with uh, this thought. Today, Doug was asked about you know young players who stood out, and he threw on Quez Watkins, John Hightower, um, uh, Jaquette, the uh, corner. Are these guys that uh, you're hearing have a shot to have a role on this team? It's funny. It's the first time I heard Jaquette's name uh, mentioned by anybody You know, with the Eagles. It's interesting because, look, there's a wonderful opportunity here for somebody to come out of nowhere and win a cornerback job. That's, that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but receiver, again, I just don't see Watkins. Yeah, it's good that, uh, you know, the head coach says that Hightower and Watkins are doing well, but I don't. Again, I don't see them. They're, they're, by the way, they're going to be a twelve personnel offense anyway, which means two tight ends and two wide receivers. And Greg Ward, just one thing on him. Look, he's had a great camp, and they love him, but they're not going to be a three receiver team very much. So I don't think he's going to get a ton of catches either. Hmm. Uh, last one, too, real quick on the linebackers. You know, Bradley Edwards, Geary. Yeah. You mentioned it's a weak spot, Doug kind of keeps going out and talking about how he likes these linebackers. I'm sure he's trying to prop them up a little bit. But are they surprising so far or not so much? Well, Bradley's done a good job, but let's put it in proper context. There's a reason why he was a six-round pick. There's some certain limitations he has that will prevent him from being a high, high-end high linebacker. The way it's explained to me by Temple Football Sources, great kid, really smart, intuitive, great for locker room, great on special teams, not a great athlete. Um, he, he's just limited in what he can do, and that's why he was a late-round pick. Now, so far, he's flashing. Uh, T.J. Edwards is, I'm told, been the best linebacker of any player of the seven linebackers they have on the roster. That's great. He's taken a step up. Uh, they're hoping that he'll have a bigger role in terms of pass coverage because last year it was not, certainly not his forte. Nick Gary's been their best linebacker, I, I would say, um, you know, last two years, but I don't think that's saying very much, to be honest with you. Uh, so th- th- this is a this is look. Let's call it like it is. This is a weak linebacker core. Uh, they're very young, which is a good thing. They just don't have the talent of other teams. Uh, he's Adam Kaplan, longtime NFL insider. He's from the Inside the Birds podcast, which dropped right now. You could check it out where he and Jeff Mosher dish more on the injuries and performances at training camp. A look at the corners, the quarterbacks, the running back rotation. If you want more football, download the latest version of the Inside the Birds podcast and get it now wherever you listen to podcasts. He is Adam Kaplan. Adam, appreciate the time as always, my friend. Thank you.